It's the middle of the month of December. The streets now are dressed in red and green. There's a sign up in a store, only nine days more. It's depressing if you know what I mean. Do you have the December dilemma? Do you struggle with it? That's what we're talking about today on Face to Face. Hello and welcome to Face to Face. My name is David Paskin, your friendly neighborhood rabbi, and I am thrilled to be here today with Cantor Norman Cohenfala. Hi, Cantor Norman. How you doing? Hi, Rabbi David. How are you? Thank you um, for inviting um, me to this program. Absolutely. I'm so thrilled to have you here, and I, I want to let people who are watching know that um, Rabbi Alan Litwack, who um, has been with us for the last two episodes and who will be back, um, is sitting Shiva with his family, and uh, we're sending our love and our blessings to him and to uh, the entire Litwack family. Um, and uh, standing in for, not really standing in for him, standing on his own two feet is Cantor Norman, my uh, partner in crime when it comes to music and all things tech. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to our conversation today. Uh, but before we do that, uh, you've had a very busy Hanukkah. I know because I've, I feel like I've been with you for so much of it. Have you had any family time to, to celebrate the holiday? Yeah, we did, we did. We had, we had a great time uh, a few of the day. Sometimes, you know, uh, at least I, we tried to find time to light the candles together. It's okay, but you know, this year in particular was very busy with all the programming that we, we had planned together. It's, it's strange how, um, I mean, we talked about the pandemic on the first show, but it's strange how um, the distance that the pandemic has created has, has made so many people work so much harder, I think, and spend so much more time, uh, not just in creating, but in, in engaging with people, even, in, even though we're not face to face. The delivery process is different. You need to think about those things as well. Right, and it takes time. But I've, it's been really lovely seeing your children uh, join us for candle lighting and, and all that good stuff. So uh, it's been wonderful, just, just wonderful. So um, Cantor, uh, yeah. th what I sang at the top was from a song that uh, I think I recorded it back in 97 or 95 or something. And um, Back Which, by then, the way, is, is, a, is a great song. It's a great thank song. you. Back then, at least, the December dilemma was a real thing here in America. And so, what I wanted to talk with us today about is: is it still a thing? And and this is why I'm so excited to have you here. Is there a December dilemma in other places in the world? Let, let me back up for just a moment. So, the December dilemma in America, at least my experience, is goes back to when I was in, in public school in St. Louis, Missouri. I distinctly remember walking into the, I, I must have been in uh, middle school maybe, walking into the cafeteria and the cafeteria workers were decorating for Christmas. They were putting up green and red and little Christmas trees and everything. And I went to the, I, I guess it was the principal at the time, and, and I asked and the response that I got was that because they were decorating in the kitchen, which was their workspace, that was different than had they been decorating out in the cafeteria proper. And so, so what ended up happening is I ended up befriending the cafeteria workers and then giving them some Hanukkah decorations to put up okay. because I, I, I wanted to feel included in the celebration. I wanted my beliefs and my experiences and my faith to be a part of the celebration uh, that was happening all around me. And of course, you know, when I drive home every night, I see the beautiful lights on people's homes and the Christmas trees. And there has been, I think, in America for, for decades, uh, maybe even uh, longer, for young children, a real dilemma around how do I, where do I find myself as a Jewish person in December when Christmas is so predominant and and of course we're speaking from a Jewish perspective but it's not just the Jews it's right everybody who isn't Christian so maybe we can just start Cantor maybe you could talk a little bit about you've lived all over the world so you should probably first tell us where you've lived but what is December like these this holiday season what is it like elsewhere is Hanukkah as big as it is here in America and and how do how do Jewish people approach this time of year? So I would uh, 
take you back a bit uh, just to understand one of the main differences. I mean, if you want to introduce uh, where I lived, I know I was raised, uh, I was born and raised in, in Argentina. Uh, and then uh, work took me to Europe, to Amsterdam, and then London, and then I arrived here to Miami. But I would say most of the childhood and adolescence and, and youth I spent in Argentina. And I think we need to make a distinction between what happened, uh, the ambience, the imagery that we associate with Christmas in the Northern Hemisphere compared to the South Hemisphere. So if you think about this concept of, uh, of uh, white Christmas, snowy, uh, cozy, uh, you know, uh, with the family gatherings ar around the fireplace, that's definitely not, it's not the picture that you have uh, in the Southern. That, that's, what I that's what I used to think of before I moved to Florida. <laughs> but Florida, it's, it's still okay. You know, actually, it's a, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice uh, time of the year to spend. Uh, but I'm telling you, when you are in December in Buenos Aires, it's bloody hot. So there is nothing about <laughs> the snow, okay? It, especially in Buenos Aires, it, it never snows. It, maybe once in every 40 years, snows just a bit, uh, you know, in wow. July but never in December. So this concept, I, I think that's important because, you know, one of the things that we associate Christmas, especially or the Hanukkah season um, is with uh, with the winter cold uh, darkness. So this concept about uh, bringing light among, uh, you know, within darkness that is surrounded us, that doesn't work in the southern hemisphere because the days are longer, actually are the longest days in the in the in the, in the year. And so that I just wanted to point out that that's probably make a difference uh, because uh, um, the way you you perceive the, the the holiday season definitely in the sound Can, in the atmosphere. Cantor, the, I, I, sorry, this is going to sound so naive. You said the days are are the longest in the winter in the southern hemisphere. No, because it's it's a, it's a summer there. Right. Sorry. So here is winter. Back and to you. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it's really it's hot because it's summer. Uh, hence, is longer days. Okay. So, uh, and that's why uh, usually uh, uh, everything that happens in December is uh, happens outdoors, basically. Um, now, one of the things I, I, I would say um, that uh, that happened. Uh, also uh, uh, around that time, and I think plays uh, an important part, at least it was in my upbringing, upbringing, is that part of most of the Jewish education, you get it from the Jewish day school. I was I was like studying in a bubble, you know, like Jewish day school. And, uh, and usually uh, the school starts mid-March and ends the end of November, maybe first week in December. So by the time Hanukkah arrives, you, you just, check out so it's, there there's nothing that the school can offer you because it's already uh, either uh, even for Purim you know Purim usually doesn't start uh, or you already started or maybe start two days after school started in March so that also plays a, a huge part so there is a there there, there is a, there are some elements that um, defines or uh, basically influences influence the, the your experience for for Hanukkah during the December and definitely that plays a part in terms of uh, how how uh, how little Hanukkah um, uh, is in your life you know as a child uh, except whatever you celebrate at home uh, really is all around uh, being a, I was raised in a, in a Catholic uh, Catholic country so uh, Really, Christmas is, is very, very strong, and and I definitely think that uh, it's hard to compete with, with that. Uh, there, are, there are more things to, to say if you if you want, but uh. well, I'm I'm so when you say it's hard to compete, so it, as I was thinking about this question, I actually found two different perspectives, and and one is so for example, the ADL, the Anti Defamation League, has guidance for educational institutions, uh, I, I think 
primarily primary schools, about how teachers and schools should approach this season. Um, th there is a point to this, by the way, to, to what you said before. Let, let, let me just share with you what they say. So they, in their guidance, they write, in any given year, a number of holidays may occur in December, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Bill of Rights Day, and Bodhi Day. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, a Buddhist celebration. And it, it, they write, and it may be appropriate for a lesson on various celebrations held in the winter season. In this context, it is permissible for teachers to display religious symbols so long as they are used solely as a teaching aid and are displayed temporarily as part of an educational lesson. So the ADL's argument is, as I understand it, is these holidays um, are, uh, we need to, we need to sanitize them, right? That we need to bring them out of the spiritual, in the public square at least, and, and, and we can appreciate them from an educational perspective, from a cultural perspective, but let's stay away from the religious piece of it. Now, as a counter to that, Gil Troy, who's a scholar of North American history at uh, McGill University, is the author of 10 books on, on American history. In 2018, in an article in the Jewish Journal, he wrote this. Amid this December delusion, all holidays, especially Christmas and Hanukkah, have been so dumbed down and so politically corrected that in late December, people say happy holidays. Everyone knows this national day off celebrates Christmas, marking Jesus' birth in the desert of Bethlehem. Not Rudolph the big nose or er, red-nosed reindeer roasting chestnuts in snow-covered New York. And he continues, instead of spreading December delusions that we're all the same, let's confront our December dilemmas. The majority should worry about how the minority feels. Minorities should enjoy watching the majority celebrate publicly and privately. So in your experience in Argentina and or, or anywhere else, was there an effort either on your part, your family's part, your community's part to um, sort of anesthetize the religiosity of this time or to instead celebrate it and, and allow others to celebrate it publicly? That's a good question. Um... I would say that uh, being a minority uh, in Argentina and also in other countries I lived, uh, both in um, in um, Netherlands and uh, in the United Kingdom, uh, is not as I would say easy as it is here because here there is uh, an element of Jewish pride. A Jewish, uh, you're you can be. A, you can be a Jew, you can openly say that and show that. The idea of spreading the miracles, let's say for Hanukkah, which is important, uh, you can do it here because you feel safe doing that. Uh, but imagine that um, in places where anti-Semitism is, is uh, really high, uh, you cannot do that so openly, uh, or at least uh, without uh, feeling worried about that. So. Uh, Usually, that that uh, that makes it very hard. Uh, uh, in, I remember when I was a child. For example, I was all my childhood. I would say, I was uh, raised um, during a dictatorship government, so which free expression was not allowed. So imagine uh, candle, um, public uh, Hanukkah uh, lighting. It, it could not happen. So it was not part of the of the of the question. So you could you you would do this at home to preserve your own tradition. But you this idea of uh, let's see what is more important, what's more fancy about Hanukkah and that sort of marketing race that didn't exist. Uh, that's definitely fa that it's it's fascinating, Cantor. You know what you just made me think of is boy, the December dilemma is really a first world problem. That is to say, here I am quetching about the Christmas lights and you know is my menorah as big as their Christmas tree? When in in parts of the world, that's not even the debate because the idea no. of celebrating Hanukkah publicly is is it's not even possible. Uh, even imagine those uh, Maranos in uh, in the uh, Iberian Peninsula. You know they could not celebrate anything, not even Shabbat. They had to light Shabbat candles, you know, uh, hidden. So uh, I think. Uh, if I may say that December dilemma that you describe is really, an, uh, in my opinion, more an American uh, issue, which is uh, which is 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 
it's a good thing to think about that because we are already advanced in many other things, you know. Uh, but in places where where you you don't feel safe uh, to be a Jew and just openly express your religiosity, I think uh, that's that's a different uh, a different world, as you say. And I, I wouldn't say it's first world or second world. It's just uh, America is is really um, a great place to be a Jew. And, and and that's why when I arrived here, I, f I felt for the first time that I could wear my kippah and just, you know, uh, be proud and don't be uh, mindful about where I should walk. I, I, when I was in London, I remember I was walking. Usually you uh, you try to be mindful about, uh, you know, where you walk with the kippah, because especially in some neighborhoods, sometimes it, it could be dangerous. And I remember just... Uh, I was walking from after my uh, Shabbat service in my synagogue. I served there to another place was like a young professional dinner on Shabbat. So I was just nearby. I didn't take took, uh, take my kippah, and someone with a bicycle uh, just uh, was riding next to me and just shouted at me, "Jewish bastard!" So imagine that and how you think of uh, public uh, uh, publicly express uh, your identity. You have to be brave. To do that, and I think yeah. in America here um, we we are so so lucky uh, in a way. Yeah, you know, you you talked before about about pride, Jewish pride, and it, there was a um, a really important study back in 2014 of the Miami Jewish community, which is where you, you and I are based. So I want to I want to bring you out of your past and into the present as as a cantor in our community for a moment. Um, there was a lot of really interesting information in this study, and I, I wanted to share sort of two tidbits with you. One was that um, when it comes to pride, 99% of respondents say they're proud to be Jewish. 99%. Now, of that 100%, which includes 99 who say that they are proud to be Jewish, 13% always, usually, or sometimes have a Christmas tree. In their house so i'm curious do you have a thought do you have a, any thoughts on is there a tension for for you and you know here in in north miami beach do you feel a tension between the pride that so many jews feel and and even the practice that so many jews do you know 80 percent of jews have a mezuzah not 80 percent of jews 80 percent of respondents for, to the study have a mezuzah on their front door. 81% always or usually participate in a Passover Seder. Is there a tension between having a Christmas tree, enjoying the Christmas lights, or, or, or any of the trappings of this December dilemma here in America, does that butt up against this Jewish pride that so many people feel? I think it shouldn't because uh, if you, let's say if you feel <laughs> proud about being Jewish and about embracing your own heritage, you know, dazzling lights should not bother you. Uh, I think we have to embrace diversity because if we do, if we as, as, as Jewish people embrace diversity and respect uh, other traditions, uh, that's that's the way uh, we should expect other traditions to respect ours. So in a way, it had to start with us. Uh, and I always uh, uh, tell my son, Uriel, who, who started now to inquire about, oh, can I have a Christmas tree? Uh, and I said, you know, like we, we are all made uh, in God's image, whatever God you believe in. And uh, we have to respect uh, that uh, decision. E everyone is free uh, to, to believe in whatever you want. And if we believe what we believe, and we as parents try to pass on this tradition to our children uh, we, we we cannot isolate them and, and uh, just to say this is our bubble we need to show what what is around so that they appreciate what we have yeah and i and i th and i think that um we can also differentiate children have to be a certain age to get this but i think we can also differentiate between um appreciating other people's celebrations and us celebrating so this to say, I love the lights, and I love even more than the lights Christmas music. Cantor, we got to do something about Hanukkah music. It's, I was thinking about that. Oh my but lord! Actually, uh, 
you, you, so there is a there is a guy who's a, who who just last year released an album of a, of a Hanukkah songs uh, with the uh, in the Christmas genre, Jacob Cruz, uh, Jacob Kraus. Uh, oh, Kraus, yeah. Yes, he have you Spike. have you his sorry, nickname is Spike. Spike yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's why. Uh, he did an amazing job as a, oh, yeah. like Hanukkah songs w uh, with, uh, within the Christmas genre. Uh, oh. He said, "Say why, why, why don't we have that?" So I say, oh, "Let's create one." But yeah, of course, uh, we cannot compete uh, Christmas cards with. Uh, I love the, the Christmas songs. songs. I mean, look, the irony is most of them were written by Jews, so maybe we should hire some Christians to write our Hanukkah songs. They probably yeah, sound yeah. better. But, but um, yeah, but you know, I could you. listen. I could listen to Little Drummer Boy and and uh, you know uh, all day long. I, so, uh, but in do when I do that, I'm appreciating that song is not mine, and that doesn't mean I can't appreciate it. Doesn't mean I can't enjoy it. But for me, at least as a Jew, there is a line that I draw. You know, there is a, a, a some separation between appreciating. Um, Christmas and Christmas celebrations and actually I guess participating in them yes I, I, I agree 100% with you I would add that also another concept that maybe is uh, you being born in, in America is, is you may not appreciate something that you have that sometimes uh, Jewish in the diaspora and the rest of the diaspora don't which is even if, even if uh, let's say you cannot compete uh, let's say Dreadel song doesn't compete with any Christmas carol at least you have a dreidel song, okay, that you can relate to because you can yes. think about uh, the words that speaks to you. It's fun, okay. Maybe musically it's not the greatest song, but actually you embrace that and you even you can sing Oh Hanukkah, Oh Hanukkah, come light the menorah, and you understand what it's all about. Uh, especially for for the majority of the Jewish people who may not uh, understand uh, Hebrew. Now, uh, the here in, 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 um, in America, of course, in English speaking countries, there is a vast myriad of uh, Jewish songs uh, written for the holidays in English and that help preschool kids start to, to know these songs and eventually you remember as an adult. Um, and, and as opposed to when I grew up, I was, was a bunch of songs in Hebrew. You know that, you know, you can talk about the Sevivon uh, or Maotzur. Uh, and that's it, you know, there was no, no more. And actually you relate also, uh, or you connect uh, with the holiday through music uh, and, and uh, having here so much music uh, written also in English that you know, you, it's a language that you can understand, I think is a plus. Uh, that's, so that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. You know, my, I think my big takeaway from this conversation with you is, thank God we are able to have a December dilemma in America. Because we, yeah. we think of it as a, as a dilemma when, in fact, um, in contradistinction to most of the world, how lucky we are that we can even feel this tension publicly, that we can even um, talk about and challenge the status quo and, 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 and argue for Hanukkah to have a, to have a place in the world. It, it, it's a privilege that we get to live here and, and do that. It really is. Um, yeah. Cantor, I'm, I'm so grateful for your time. This was such a joy talking with you. Thank you so much. Thank you um, for having me. Yeah, and uh, friends, we're gonna uh, take a couple weeks off um, for winter break, and uh, we will be back in January with all new episodes of Face to Face, but I wanna thank Cantor Norman for joining me today, and I, of course, wanna send my love, our love, and our regards and condolences to Rabbi Litwack. Um, and to all of you, we wish you a light-filled December, no matter what you're celebrating. Until next time, friends. See you soon.